sometimes you have to break these mindsets. And so you, you sure. have to be a good communicator. You have to be able to demonstrate. You can't stand in your ivory tower of expertise. You have to be able to break down these things and make it so that people understand why it will work. You do a lot of this stuff to get this internal feedback and really try to understand the day-to-day -day of the employees and what they're going through. So you can weigh that against the goals of the business and ownership, leadership, things like that. What do you do when there's a clash there between what leadership wants, what leadership expects, what their goals are versus the day-to-day -day needs of the employees? How do you kind of say, hey, well, you know, you're not accomplishing this because we found this big problem over here, or we can't do this because of some stuff your employees were saying needs to get done first. What do you do when there's a clash? I think that when you, when you know you're right, then you have to know how to communicate it. And you have yeah. to show people like there's a really good explanation that we're trying to explain how inside outside sales, this is a common one. Inside sales doesn't exist in most roofing companies. They just have outside sales. Those people do everything from set their appointments, do their estimates, climb on roofs, take pictures, drive around, and they're not operationally efficient. If you split it into inside outside sales, just climbs on roofs, takes pictures, and then presents. Inside sales takes calls, books appointments, does the follow-up, closes the deal, gets an interruption. So now you have to create this new role, but the customer doesn't want to increase what they're paying. So you have to take some commission away from the outside rep and the outside rep goes like, well, why am I losing my commission? Well, because this guy's doing all the shit that you suck at. And then you have to be able to explain to them that if you could work together as a team, you'll both make more money and you have to find ways to make that easy to understand. And another common one is like Jim Rohn's ham story, right? So you have, when you're trying to talk to people in a company, try to settle this dispute, it usually is for, for a source around, that's not the way we do it. And this is the way we should. And you have to break the mindset of that's not the way we do it. That's not the way we've done it, that we're already successful. Why are we going to do it this new way? And Jim Rohn has a story about his wife making a ham. And he says, honey, why are you cutting the hams off? And he goes like, that would be so much more meat. Everybody's going to come over for Christmas dinner. And now you're going to have this ham. And these two pieces are gone. I wish I could eat those pieces. Well, it makes it taste better. He says, well, how? And she says, I don't know. It's just the way my mom taught me. So then he calls up her mom. He says, Carmen, I can't wait to see you at Christmas dinner. But Mary's cutting the ends off the ham. And you know, it, it, she says it makes it taste better, but I don't know how that makes sense. Is it because the flavor gets into it more? And she's like, no, that's not the right reason we do it. It's because it cooks more evenly. And, and Jim says, well, how does it cook more evenly? Because like, this because the, the exposed ends are not the skin. Is that what makes it work? And she goes, I'm not sure. That's just the way my mom taught me. So then he calls yeah, Elizabeth yeah. Brown. Brown says, Elizabeth, how come you do the ham? We cut off the ends. Mary says it because it tastes better. Carmen says it's because it cooks better. Why? She says, no, it's because when I was a girl, the oven was only this big. And so we had to put the oven, the, the ham wouldn't fit in the oven unless we cut the ends off. And yeah. so, but yet yeah, there's people in companies today and there's an equally relevant story about PBS and some other television network that has a similar problem. And it's like, sometimes you have to break these mindsets. And so you, you sure. have to be a good communicator. You have to be able to demonstrate not just like you can't stand in your ivory tower of expertise. You have to be able to break down these things and make it so that people understand why it will work because, and, and of course you have to have their, you have to have their concerns at heart. Like you have to want their job to be more rewarding, whether that's more commissions or less angry customers or a day where they don't have to worry about stuff when they go home because they're able to see their tasks are done or whatever. But <clears throat> you have to have their best, you have to have their best, you have to have best intentions towards doing what they need to have a more rewarding day at work. Cause it's really what you're doing is you're just giving them a tool to do their job. Like this is just what they do for work. So how can I make your day more rewarding? Okay. Well, if you don't I do that, that anymore, then Mary won't deal with this. So, but because now we're also making Tom do that. So now you don't have to deal with this. So you have to be able to have these conversations. So yeah. solution extraction, I it's think is what informs your future conversations. Yeah, it's so much more than setting up a CRM, right? Like the, the thing that I always, you know, would tell people is like, there's some things that just aren't solved by technology, they're people issues, right? And I think the other thing that is like so important too about commanding a, a industry expertise like you do, yeah, sure, you can be a HubSpot partner, but if you have the industry knowledge, you, you're almost coming from a place where it's like, hey, listen, I have the credibility and the knowledge and expertise to explain why this is a problem, right? Because I understand the industry. I'm not just the HubSpot person, right? Yeah. Like, and, and, and I think that's another thing that really helps because there's so many issues that I think sometimes disguise themselves as a CRM or a technology issue when they're not, right? And oftentimes people aren't gonna listen 
to the CRM person, right? When they spot, oh, well, this is actually a, a people issue, right? You know, they're going to be like, just try to fix it with buttons and apps and whatever it may be. And that can't always be done. Thank <laughs> you.